I use a lot of terminologies and defining a, a typical vibration problem. That is the reason we have classified the what kind of different uh, vibrations are uh, exist based on the ki kind of system and input and uh, uh, damping and kind of uh, approximations we do. We have classified different vibrations. Today, what we do, uh, what we are going to do is our first step in vibration analysis, as I already mentioned, which is mathematical modeling. So how do we model mathematical model, how we develop for a physical system? So that is very critical, very important, because you, whenever you see a system, how to uh, represent exactly mathematically, so that plays a big role in solution so that's the reason uh, we have to be uh, um, uh, be very careful in uh, defining this step so uh, as already i introduced few uh, them but the basic building blocks we call it as uh, for vibration study the basic building blocks for vibration study are uh, basically uh, uh, the system character is defined with spring and mass okay which we already seen with the example so uh, mass and next is massless spring basically we uh, we generally neglect sorry mm. So please excuse me, that rubbing I cannot do. So massless spring. And uh, massless damper, OK? So uh, these two, uh, I hope, uh, are very clear from last discussion. In mechanical systems, every object possesses a mass and elasticity. So those two characters we are defining with these two parameters, uh, these building blocks, mass and spring, OK? Mass and spring. Uh, the third one, which is uh, not a system uh, character, which is a, um, uh, we can say how uh, uh, the oscillations will die down after some uh, time. So that is what it happens in reality. It, uh, it doesn't continue for infinite time. So that is the reason uh, uh, you need to introduce this building block damper. And uh, uh, this, uh, this will have very less uh, influence on uh, identifying the natural frequency of the system. That is the system, uh, uh, dynamic system property. OK, we can say that. So the first thing, mass, mass is pretty clear to everyone because we are uh, under studying this about this mass uh, from uh, intermediate onwards. So this might be uh, introduced even in before that. So which is uh, 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 the mass is a combination of particles which exist in every object. And uh, uh, it is also, we can say it is uh, uh, inertia okay if more mass is there more inertia we call so inertia here in the sense the uh, 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 the nature of or we can say that amount of uh, force we need to apply to change uh, from one state to other state so if mass is more it we can say that inertia is more so the inertia uh, uh, is nothing but changing of a state under the application of load so uh, so heavier mass so heavy uh, you need to apply more force in order to change its state of motion of a object so that's what is our understanding so uh, basically we represent mass uh, m and the units are kg and uh, the force associated with this mass is the inertia force fi so that is m x double dot. As I mentioned, acceleration uh, we represent in vibration study as x double dot. And uh, that is what is this. Uh, so m x double dot. So the, we will come to the uh, next one. Uh, that is the damper uh, we'll consider. 
so here damper we uh, assume we assume that it is massless of course uh, this might not be true in reality but uh, we will try to limit our uh, analysis with simple uh, simplified model so we don't want to complicate the model uh, because vibration study is more about oscillations and uh, these dampers and springs uh, generally uh, will be uh, compared to, to the other systems which are connected would be massless. So in comparison, we can say massless, but in reality, they might be possessing some mass. But for our, our analysis, this is a massless element. Okay, this is, a, this is also massless. And also, it will not have any stiffness. Okay, that is also we mention. So that kind of a system we call it as damper. Okay, so basically, what uh, what is damping is representing. This is the uh, 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 the resisting or uh, dying down function of a oscillatory behavior. So. In uh, practice, there are uh, three kind of damping models we use. Okay, so one of the uh, uh, the most popular one is viscous damping, and the second one is Coulomb damping. Oh, spelling is. Um, how do you spell? Yeah. So here. So Coulomb damping uh, are uh, dry friction damping we call sometimes. The last one is material damping or hysteresis damping. So in practice, uh, there are these are the three popular models we use. But our uh, analysis for, from gate perspective, we will limit only to the viscous damping. OK, so uh, we will uh, discuss a little uh, more about this damping. So uh, the Coulomb or dry friction damping exists when there are two relatively moving objects without having any um, uh, like anti-friction lubricant where dry friction exists. So under that scenario to represent the loss of energy, basically damping is nothing but loss of energy. Because of that reason, you will lose uh, uh, or uh, oscillations will die down after some time. So uh, in case of dry friction uh, 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 case, so the uh, uh, loss of energy uh, will be in the form of heat because of uh, no uh, anti-friction lubrication or uh, this case in that case so uh, this uh, we don't uh, study as a part of our analysis because this leads to uh, a nonlinear uh, function so that is the reason which is uh, uh, difficult to handle mathematically so we don't focus for time being or for our analysis and uh, the next one is uh, hysteresis damping so uh, many of our materials uh, material itself you take and if you uh, uh, apply a force and uh, disturb that material and internally it will oscillate and it will die down after some time uh, but this internal uh, damping is because of the uh, material uh, elasticity inside of it so what happens in reality is that when you apply some energy to the uh, system the planes in uh, uh, in the material will uh, absorb them and uh, when releasing uh, maybe some amount of energy will be lost because there will be a friction exists between layer to layer uh, internal layers so uh, many reasons uh, in a uh, crude way i'm just mentioning that so because of many reasons many defects or many whatever it may be the case so you will not get uh, whatever you are giving input to the system you will not get as output so same output so 
those uh, to handle such kind of scenarios we will use the uh, hysteresis damping model uh, so that is also not uh, because that is also very difficult to model mathematically so even though damping uh, for our study it is simple uh, uh, but in reality damping is very complicated subject so many people does phd on that alone it's a uh, building a mathematical model for damping of different phenomena they develop um, uh, uh, different uh, means like in each individual phd could be a um, problem so um, even still people are uh, working uh, um, bringing lot of practical scenarios into mathematical models so uh, but for uh, for us from gate perspective uh, damping is going to be a very simple model that is viscous damping so how do you model a viscous damping okay so uh, in this actually we represent this viscous damping as a dash part we call it as so dash part nothing but it looks like a uh, in a two wheeler you might have seen shock absorber so that is similar to this so this is called dash part this is how we will represent the phenomena of viscous damping so how the dash part functions like there will be small small holes here uh, on on this piston we can say or a uh, water it may be okay so and these two members are uh, relatively moving member one and member two they are relatively moving so whenever an uh, force external force is applied so what it does is this member will try to push and in uh, here you will have a uh, fluid okay viscous medium will have and when you are uh, when uh, because of the applied force it will try to push this liquid inside of it since uh, uh, this liquid has to escape and it will escape it through only these small small holes which we are allowing and through that uh, uh, those through holes only the liquid will uh, enter into other side of the compartment and uh, this is a slow process and uh, because uh, uh, we are allowing through a small holes so uh, here uh, they will generate some kind of heat and our applied force will uh, go or uh, will be uh, uh, will uh, so sorry the applied force will be uh, <coughs> will be reduced in the form of heat when it is passing through these small holes from one compartment to the other compartment so this is uh, briefly about uh, uh, the fu functioning of a dash part or viscous damping because this is a viscous medium we use so in order to generate or in order to uh, create that um, dissipation so mathematically how do you represent if we assume that the uh, the um, damping force is uh, basically proportional to velocity and so c x dot okay this is called damping coefficient so this is damping coefficient so the damping force is equal to c into x dot the units for uh, c are so this is nothing but uh, force newton and uh, x dot velocity will be divided here so we can say that newton second per meter so this is uh, we we also call it as linear damping we can say so this is a simplest model uh, and uh, which doesn't create a uh, uh, um, uh, big problem to handle mathematically and uh, we also see a different uh, scenario where uh, instead of linear force if you are applying a uh, rotational force torque we can say and such scenario we represent like if you want to represent similar to this assume that so this is how you are applying a torque and you have a uh, fluid medium here so because of the viscosity 
so uh, when it is rotating under uh, viscous medium and uh, it loses its energy uh, in the form of heat okay and and uh, that expression we can able to represent it like this so this is uh, a torque we are applying now instead of linear force okay so the torque is proportional to uh, angular velocity instead of uh, so because linear system now become rotational system so that is the reason Mm, so so f will become so linear force will become rotational element that is uh, torque and uh, the velocity will become the linear velocity will become angular velocity theta dot and c we will represent as mm, some different name uh, assume that uh, so c t or something we can keep so this is indirectly a torsional uh, damping okay so the units for this c uh, mostly you discriminate c uh, different c's here with units only may not people may not use a ctr c theta or many ways they represent even people represent c theta sometimes but whatever it may be you will uh, able to distinguish which c is given to you based on the units so what uh, what kind of units you will get uh, the damping under torsional load that is uh, uh, torsional damping coefficient we can say that is so the torsion means nothing but newton meter and uh, c uh, theta dot means seconds divided by radians okay so <clears throat> if units are given in the form of newton second per meter that is nothing but linear damping coefficient and uh, if it is given in this format uh, in this units then it is torsional damping coefficient that is how it is given sorry so uh, uh, this is all about the damping element and uh, also we assume that uh, uh, the elements are massless okay and no stiffness um, <clears throat> but only one problem uh, this is a dissipating element so uh, indirectly the moment you introduce a damping into the system so the system will become a non conservative system uh, so because there is a some loss of energy during the process from one point one state of motion to other state of motion so uh, that's the reason uh, in solving the problems uh, uh, this uh, conservative principles will not work okay so that you have to be keep in mind so it also uh, uh, vectorially also uh, the force is uh, proportional to or associated with the velocity so um, that also uh, most of the times creates a problem because uh, you know the uh, spring force is fx and uh, inertia force is mx double dot they are on same line even though 180 degrees but they are on same line but uh, cx dot or x dot basically uh, which is uh, 90 degrees to your displacement and velocity sorry acceleration so this creates a, uh, a different phase uh, extra phase difference so because of that a mathematical handling of uh, damping problems will be little complicated even with this simplified model okay so now uh, we will discuss about the the next uh, uh, important element of uh, vibration uh, study uh, sorry nothing sir no, okay now nah, so uh, spring uh, is a, a massless a massless we call it as Uh, the moment you say it is massless so the force uh, applied at one end will be same at the other end okay so the force applied at one end will be same at the other end so there will not be any loss 
if the moment you create a, uh, you say it is mass so mx double dot indirectly will differs them so now it since it is a massless spring so uh, that assumption will lead us to saying that uh, the force applied at one end of the spring will be same as other, at other end okay and uh, the uh, the spring force uh, is so of course our simplified spring uh, it is mm, the spring force which is equal to k into x so k is nothing but stiffness constant so the units for the stiffness constant are newton per meter okay and uh, uh, in, it is nothing but the amount of force you required to deflect by a, a unit okay for a unit deflection what is the amount of force i need to apply so that tells you about the stiffness if it is too stiff member is too stiff that is uh, nothing uh, nothing but you need to apply a, a very high force in order to get a unit displacement so that is what is the meaning so again this is associated with the linear force and linear displacement but uh, there is a, a different case that is the rotational under the rotational scenario uh, if uh, the same thing how can i convert so the linear force will be okay so the linear force will be converted as torque which is equal to the uh, okay so the x will become uh theta and the k will become k theta or k, k theta we will say that so this is the torsional stiffness so the units for the torsional stiffness that is k theta which will be uh, newton meter per radians so these are the unit for the torsional stiffness and these are the unit for the linear stiffness okay so based on these units also you can able to distinguish sometimes people just simply say that stiffness so they don't even say that we linear stiffness or torsional stiffness so you have to make out from the units only so that is the reason it is uh, very important to keep these uh, units in mind okay sometimes they twist the problem only uh, with the units so there is nothing uh, uh, high five problem but uh, because uh, uh, with the units they can create a uh, problem and they may play with you so <clears throat> now uh, we understood that uh, the three major elements are necessary to build a mathematical model for a uh, vibratory object so but as i mentioned already in reality uh, um, uh, uh, all the objects will not look like a springs and uh, your simple st stiffness you may not able to calculate so uh, with a, a direct expression so under that scenarios how to calculate the k so the first case we will consider for calculation of k is the longitudinal stiffness of a bar so we uh, we take a uh, as the moment you say longitudinal so that means uh, the motion will be in the along the axis of the member so you take a bar and uh, you attach a mass at the end assume and this is a massless rod okay massless bar for a massless uh, member bar uh, so you attached a, a lumped mass at the end and you are disturbing this system in x direction like this along the axis of the member so under that scenario this member might be oscillating 
microscopically maybe visually you cannot see but microscopically you can see that oscillating and that is also very important from practical point of view so uh, then uh, you know this is mass but how to find the stiffness of this member so we will take the help of strength of materials for in, in that scenario so uh, you will be having uh, the properties of the bar just like uh, area of cross section and uh, Eng's modulus, elastic modulus. Okay, so if you know them, so then uh, basically those are representing the elastic behavior of this rod. So that is what we have to uh, consider for the calculation of K. So, but what kind of expression we need to use for K? So that we are trying to derive. So for derivation, we will take the help of strength of materials. I assume that these simple equations, you will be knowing it already. So the E expression for E is nothing but stress divided by strain. So the stress, you can indirectly call it as F divided by uh, area of cross section. And the strain is nothing but the delta change in length divided by the actual length. So the change in length, if I call it as x divided by the original length maybe of this member is L, assume that, OK? So the change in length here, I am calling it as x. And uh, uh, so this is uh, the amount of force applied onto the member. So from this, uh, we know that uh, the expression for uh, K we are trying to get. So what is the definition of K uh, from a previous discussion? That is F divided by X. K is nothing but F divided by X. So from uh, this, uh, this expression, can we able to get uh, equation for F by X? Yes. So that is F by X is nothing but E A by L. Okay, so uh, this is your longitudinal stiffness of the bar. Okay, so this you can able to calculate uh, by using A E by L or people call E A by L. So uh, so here E uh, is the angst modulus of the bar and area of cross section of the bar divided by L. Okay, so we are making this is massless just to uh, simplify this uh, mathematical uh, expression understanding of this problem okay so uh, you have to keep in mind we are doing a uh, lot of assumptions okay because of this reason in reality uh, even if you are using these expressions you may not get actual values so there will be some mismatch between your analytical solution and practical solutions okay and even simulations are what are the mathemat uh, what are is uh, the computer models they might be developed by using these so that's why you may not see the 100 percent correlation between test and uh, theory okay so you have to keep all these things in mind when you are choosing a uh, method or uh, uh, model so similarly uh, I will take it I will uh, talk about the another scenario that is transfer stiffness of a beam So uh, again, you consider uh, a member, okay? This is also massless again, assume. And you keep at the end uh, a lumped mass, M, capital M. And uh, the properties of this member are uh, E, A, and I, okay? Uh, and uh, here this uh, since it is transverse vibrations so uh, this side of uh, oscillations it is happening so what will be the the uh, transfer stiffness of this beam okay so what happens when we have uh, when you disturb this mass and uh, uh, 
uh, that is indirectly it will deflect uh, so the mass will deflect by delta I assume and uh, sorry so sorry okay hmm. Hmm. Mm. assume it, uh, it is deflecting like this uh, so of course this is not a correct way to represent but uh, uh, this I'm not able to get it right for time being assume that this uh, member is deflecting like this and the deflection is delta here you know that cantilever beam when you apply a force at the end so it will try to deflect with a typical shape of a uh, 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 <clears throat> parabola okay so uh, here uh, indirectly uh, uh, the applied force at the end is nothing but mg force which is acting because of the lumped mass and because of that it will deflect and that deflection is countered by the amount of stiffness in this member so that stiffness for time being uh, tr transfer stiffness i will write it as so this transfer stiffness in this member is trying to pull this deflection or trying to keep the system in equilibrium state so that is what is stiffness of this member indirectly for us that is what is the required interest so how do you get that expression for that kt or also ktr here we are seeing so that is k into uh, so whatever is the deflection uh, is uh, delta which is equal to uh, mg so uh, since system is going to be equilibrium because of this uh, stiffness so uh, <clears throat> so here uh, the deflection uh, of a cantilever beam uh, when you apply a uh, mg force at the extreme end so the expression you will uh, get it from the strength of materials so that is uh, mg l cube divided by e e i 3 e i okay so uh, this is uh, a typical uh, expression uh, you would be knowing it from the strength of materials uh, you will get so um, so here mg because of the mg force the amount of deflection we got is this much and in this common terms if you cancel it out so you will get an expression for transfer stiffness of the beam so in this form that is 3 e i divided by L cube so uh, previously uh, K uh, the expression for K that is the long stiffness is just E A by L and uh, in case of transfer stiffness 3 E I by L cube so similarly uh, <clears throat> we'll take a different case of a beam so may we may say that simply supported beam okay and uh, maybe mm, it is supported like this assume okay in the center uh, again here we are also assuming that this is a massless rod and in the center we have kept a mass lumped mass okay so this is located at a center here so which is l by 2 and l by 2 so under this scenario so what is going to be the transfer stiffness of this member so under uh, this kind of a loading so you will have a deflection and the maximum deflection you will observe at the center and that uh, you will have a, a expression for that so you will be uh, you can able to get it from this strength of material understanding and again the transfer stiffness of this member uh, will try to 
keep the system in equilibrium state so that's why k at tr into delta which is equal to mg and the expression for this uh, simply supported case so which is uh, mg l cube divided by 48 ei where this expression is valid uh, if it is loaded in the center the mass mg is acting in the center so under that scenario this expression will be valid so under uh, you will be able to get expression for delta if it is not the case uh, from a standard textbooks you can get from strength of materials okay so the kt uh, under this scenario is going to be 48 ei divided by l cube so now indirectly sorry uh, indirectly we are saying that this is nothing but a spring mass system so since um, so since it is in the y direction motion i can represent this one in like this so this ktr here is nothing but 48 ei divided by l cube and this is mass okay similarly uh, in the previous expression also we are saying that this mass this uh, a transverse uh, beam i can represent in the mathematical i can represent uh, as a vibrating system and which has a stiffness uh, ktr and that value is 3 ei divided by l cube and mass m similarly uh, this member uh, I can represent since this motion is in the x direction I can represent like this and the K here is uh, E a by L and this is mass so uh, this is how uh, you are uh, uh, representing a physical system into a mathematical model of vibrating system okay so another case uh, you will encounter is so the torsional case loading so the expression for torsional stiffness okay so under this scenario um, again a massless rod we assume and uh, in the end mass so since it is a rotational thing so the mass will now converted into uh, i or j we call it as j because it is rotating trying to rotate in the uh, z direction so we will represent it as j even if you can call it as i also so it is the deflection here is uh, rotation is theta so uh, so the uh, the properties of this member are going to be G uh, and J so since both are becoming J so I will put uh, this mass as I I Z Z okay so uh, this length is L okay so the expression for this is again from uh, uh, strength of materials we will be having under uh, uh, so sorry this is not m we call it as uh, uh, torque divided by theta which is equal to uh, yeah sorry um, just give me a minute the expression for this uh, is a standard expression so sorry just excuse me tau divided by j which is equal to shear stress divided by r which is equal to g theta by l so this is a standard expression when a member is uh, fisted and uh, uh, so this 
uh, this from comes from your strength and material understanding uh, but what we need here as a stiffness calculation for the purpose of stiffness, stiffness calculation and again we are saying it is a torsional stiffness so by the definition of torsional stiffness so maybe that is we can even say k theta uh, that is tau divided by theta okay so the tau divided by theta is nothing but our torsional stiffness expression that is how we have defined so here uh, how do you get that expression so by taking these two equalities so tau divided by j into g theta divided by l so from this tau divided by theta i can write uh, rewrite it as gj divided by l this is nothing but uh, in the similar lines of ea divided by l in case of uh, linear uh, vibrations similarly torsional it gj divided by l so this is the expression for your torsional stiffness so um, so torsional spring sometimes people represent it like this okay so differently so you can keep it like this so this is your inertia mass element and this is your k theta so um, uh, also sometimes torsional stiffness is represented as torsional spring is represented like this okay so either way this is same k theta and uh, the expression is tau divided by theta gj by l so i hope uh, is everybody is following me are there any doubts till now no sir okay i can continue okay so uh, uh, this is uh, about how to model a physical system into a uh, mathematical uh, uh, model of a spring and mass. Uh, so, uh, in reality, uh, 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 sorry. Once, repeat the slide, sir. Once. Which slide? Previous one. okay so so uh, in many of practical applications the you will not see a simple spring one spring you will see multiple springs and they are in combination connected okay so because of that reason we will be uh, uh, trying to simplify those uh, all combination of springs into a simple spring mass system so this is just for uh, simplifying the uh, mathematical from mathematical perspective um, uh, point of view we will try to simplify the many number of springs into a simple spring mass system that we call it as equivalent stiffness so there are two scenarios you will see in practice one is uh, the springs are in springs in parallel springs are in parallel and uh, so we will uh, get try to get the expression mathematical expression for equivalent stiffness uh, with the two springs but this is valid for n number of springs okay so when you are taking two springs here like this and uh, attached in this fashion so k1 and k2 so this ca this uh, <clears throat> arrangement we call it as uh, parallel arrangement the, when uh, this is indirectly springs in series sorry uh, parallel so what kind of uh, characters you will observe when uh, sp when the springs are in parallel like this so what happens is so they will undergo the both the springs undergo same amount of deflection delta so so same amount of deflection
in both the springs. And uh, and uh, the amount of force will be uh, <coughs> distributed between the springs. So whatever is the force applied be, uh, at the end uh, here and here, so due to this mass, so loading, mass loading here, so the springs will be uh, stretched and they will share the applied force. So uh, the force will be distributed between the springs. Applied force will be distributed. Between the springs. So, so in practice, maybe sometimes you may get confused given system is in parallel or series. So how do you make out whether given system is in a parallel or series? You will come, we'll see few problems also. So in this case, it is very simple to visualize. In practice, it might not be the case. So uh, what is our criteria to say that the springs are in parallel? So that criteria is, so the amount of deflection in both the springs should be same. Under that scenario, we call them springs are in parallel. So, uh, so these are the two uh, 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 conditions it satisfies uh, the springs in parallel. So under this scenario, so assume that uh, so uh, they are deflected by delta. And now what we are trying to get here is uh, instead of having n number of springs, we are trying to represent that same behavior with a simple spring mass system like this. So where mass is going to be same, but uh, instead of having two springs, I will represent that behavior, that effect with a simple uh, uh, equivalent stiffness, EQ, we can say. So then these two systems are nothing but same. So that is what we are trying to do here. And that's how we are going trying to get expression for K equivalent. So equivalent stiffness, nothing but. So how do you get that? So we know that uh, there is going to be same deflection and force is distributed. So uh, what is the force we are applying here? Mg force, okay, so that is only force. So the Mg force will be uh, distributed between, so spring one and spring two. So the amount of, the amount of, uh, force distributed might be different between the springs based on the st uh, stiffness. But uh, uh, the total uh, load taken by these two springs has to be equal to applied force mg. So the F1, uh, according to definition, so K1 into delta, because they are deflected by same amount, K2 into delta. And uh, that is equal to mg. And this I can, uh, since I'm trying to construct k equivalent, so the for k equivalent, I'm taking same amount of mass only here. So that k equivalent uh, is also will be equal to uh, multiplied with delta, same delta. So from this, I can say that k equivalent is nothing but k1 plus k2. So this is valid only in case of uh, springs are in parallel, okay? And uh, this expression is valid even with the number of, uh, more number of springs. So as your number of springs are increasing, so you can able to say that, sorry. Uh, so if it has n number of springs, uh, one to n, so kn. You can write it. So you can generalize this expression, even though we derived it for two springs. Uh, so few things uh, I would like to mention here. Uh, indirectly, we have made few uh, one uh, one more assumption, but we are not uh, telling that explicitly here. That is, uh, if you see that uh, if there are two springs of different stiffness, when you apply a load, so they will deflect differently. 
they may not deflect with the same amount delta but we are enforcing that condition here just to say uh, say that they are going to deflect same amount so this we are uh, intentionally doing because uh, if they are deflecting by a different amount delta so this will become a two degree of freedom system and that we are not handling here so uh, this uh, we are handling only single degree of freedom system and we assume that these two springs are going to deflect by same amount delta even though uh, they may deflect it differently because of different stiffnesses and uh, different force will be associated with them so that is one uh, one thing we need to keep in mind okay if it is confusing you just leave it that understanding but uh, what you need to remember here is uh, 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 so whenever so there is the same deflection in both the springs which are associated with the given mass so then that condition is nothing but parallel condition springs in parallel so i hope it is clear to everyone can i move to the next one so i'm assuming that uh, everybody is uh, understanding and uh, uh, the second can uh, second scenario where springs are in series yes sir okay so uh, how do you visualize this uh, condition or this state is like this so there is one spring and uh, on the and uh, immediately will attach another spring and there is a mass m so this is a uh, springs in series so what kind of uh, uh, conditions they satisfy is that uh since we said that uh, the mass uh, the springs are massless and the amount of force applied at the end uh, and the one uh, the second spring end that is mg okay which is mg and the same amount of force will be transferred to the other spring here also that is going to be mg because we said it is massless so it is not going to same uh, change the applied a force f so uh, the applied force is going to be same on the two extreme ends of uh, give a massless spring so that means the same amount of applied force mg is flowing through these two springs so whenever you see a scenario where the uh, uh, force developed in each spring is same so that is nothing but uh, the those springs are in series okay so the force developed sorry the force developed in each spring is same and uh, the amount of total deflection delta here is going to be the sum of these individual deltas okay so the total uh, so the displacement of the block block is sum of the sum of the deflection of each spring so uh, so how, how do i put these two statements in mathematical form like this so the delta so is going to be so delta 1 plus delta 2 so this delta is uh, again we are trying to uh, what we are doing is we are trying to uh, represent this these combination of springs into a a simple spring mass system single spring mass system and that mass m and this uh, is k equivalent 
okay and the uh, since both we are dealing with the same system so final overall delta has to be same so final deflection of the mass so this i can write it as indirectly k equivalent divided by force f okay that is equal to so delta I, uh, one is equal to nothing but uh, sorry uh, i have written in reverse way so because we know the expression for uh, f is equal to k into delta so in uh, since we are writing here delta so f divided by applied force divided by uh, the stiffness so this is equal to f divided by k1 plus f divided by k2 so if i try to uh, simplify uh, this f uh, because mg is going to be same in all cases so i can able to cancel it out so then you will get uh, uh, expression so 1 by k 1 by k equivalent is equal to 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2 so uh, uh, and as I mentioned previously, so this is valid even for n number of springs. Is it clear, everyone? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I think uh, we reached to the end of the class today. So basically, if I try to uh, revise uh, our today's class, so it is like this. So what we said that uh, there are three basic building blocks for uh, mo math for modeling a vibratory system. Those uh, three building blocks are mass, spring, and damper. So we have uh, understood the forces associated with these with each individual element and their uh, brief understandings just like for mass the force associated is inertia force that is mx double dot is, is very clear according to newton's second law and for the damper again we assumed it is massless and no stiffness and there are three different viscous and uh, coulomb, uh, coulomb and stiff sorry hysteresis damping out of that we are going to deal from gate perspective only viscous damping so that is the reason our analysis is going to be simple, but in practice, that is a difficult task to handle. So um, then uh, the expressions for linear damping and uh, torsional damping we have derived. And uh, in practice, maybe people just simply use damping coefficient, but uh, uh, you have to be careful which is a torsional or linear by, from the units given. Okay, and similarly, the stiffness is defined as uh, K is equal to F divided by X. So the amount of force you need to apply in order to generate unit displacement. That is what is the definition of stiffness. And uh, again, here also you have to be careful whether it is a linear stiffness or torsional stiffness. So that also again, you will able to distinguish from the given units. So the uh, and uh, we have seen uh, uh, how to get the expression for a uh, different kind of uh, practical scenarios. One of them is a bar. So um, bar is nothing but if it is uh, the deflection is happening along its axis of the member, then we call it as a bar. And uh, so that means it is a longitudinal stiffness. What are the stiffness is associated with the bar is a longitudinal stiffness. And the expression for that we have got by using uh, strength of material expressions. OK, so the K is here, uh, EA by L. Similarly, transfer stiffness, uh, it is 3 EI by L cube. And uh, in case of uh, this is a cantilever beam, uh, 3 EI by L cube. If it is a simply supported beam, 48 EI by L cube. And similarly, torsional stiffness is tau, theta, uh, tau divided by theta. And that can be written as GJ by L. And uh, then we have discussed about a scenario in practice where you will see multiple springs, not a simple, uh, not a single spring. So uh, how to combine those multiple springs and uh, represent as a single spring, but effect has to be same. So in order, uh, without uh, losing that essence, we need to uh, 
recreate as a simple spring mass system. How do you do that? So first we have taken a case of springs in parallel. And springs in parallel, when do you say? When the same amount of deflection taken by the both the springs. Similarly, uh, springs in a series we have taken. And the final expression for k equivalent we have derived. So for the last case, uh, that is 1 by k equivalent is equal to 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2. Uh, so this is clear, uh, I hope clear to everyone. So with this today we will uh, end today's class and uh, we'll have uh, uh, again on Friday the second and uh, the third session. Um, again uh, uh, I will extend this theory and on Sunday we will have problems associated with this. So if you have any doubts you please uh, uh, ask me. No, sir. Is everything clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so shall we end today's session? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir.